Germany as we know it today was the result of the unification of the Northern and Southern German Confederations in 1871. Germany would essentially remain the same until the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand in 1914. A series of alliances and military agreements with the Austro-Hungarian Empire forced Germany to partake in the First World War. The mobilization was swift, German morale was at an all-time high, and the common belief was that the war would be over by December of 1914, and the troops would be home by Christmas. The conflict, however, turned out to be very long and brutal, and it had a profound impact on the German people's psyche. Germany ultimately lost the war in 1918, along with 2.5 million of its citizens, roughly 4% of its population. The consequences of World War I gave Adolf Hitler, a war veteran himself, a platform to seize power and bring about one of the darkest chapters in world history. Here is an excerpt from one of his now infamous speeches. In this Stunde verlassen schon wieder Zehntausende von Parteigenossen die Stadt, während aber die einen noch von der Erinnerung zehren, werden andere schon wieder beginnen zu rüsten zum nächsten Appell. Und wieder werden die Menschen kommen und gehen und stets aufs Neue ergriffen beglückt und begeistert sein, denn die Idee und die Bewegung sind Lebensausdruck unseres Volkes und damit ein Symbol des Ewigen. Es lebe die nationalsozialistische Bewegung, es lebe Deutschland! Hitler uses power to annex many parts of Eastern Europe and finally, in September 1939, he invaded Poland and launched Germany into its Second World War. Germany was able to invade most of Western Europe while on the offensive until catastrophic defeats in 1942 turned the tide of the war and Germany was on the defensive. It eventually capitulated in May of 1945, bringing an end to the Third Reich and Hitler's reign of terror. After the war, Germany was divided between the Communist East and the Democratic West German republics. It would play a pivotal role in the Cold War that would come to define the second half of the 20th century. The country's capital, Berlin, would play a particularly central role as it was at the center of three defining moments of the Cold War. The Berlin Airlift of 1948 the construction of the Berlin Wall in 1961, and its eventual fall in November of 1989. Here are some facts on the current economic and demographic situation in Germany. Germany is a country located in Central Europe, bordered by Poland, the Czech Republic, Austria, Switzerland, France, Luxembourg, Belgium, the Netherlands, and Denmark. The country has mountainous terrain in the south, dominated by the Alps, with a plateau and forests in the center and the north. The Rhine, the Danube, and the Elba rivers, combined with Germany's central location in Europe, and its access to the North Sea allowed it to become a leading exporter in one of the most prosperous economies in Europe. The geographic challenge is preserving its territorial unity and maintaining a political balance between regions within the country. It also seeks to maintain a political alliance with France and a balance of power in Europe to preserve peace and keep markets open for trade. Berlin's efforts to keep the EU closely integrated amidst the current economic crisis are in line with this strategy.
The terms cultural closeness or distance describe whether people living in different countries share many or only a few values, or in other words, how similar their worldviews and mindsets are. In order to measure cultural closeness or distance, I use a set of more than 40 var variables, like for example Gerthoff's status cultural dimensions. Uh, one example for a cultural trait that is shared by people in these countries is future orientation. As the name indicates, future orientation means that, is, that it is important for people to plan ahead. Uh, of course, you can also find strong tendencies towards future orientation in other countries, but in German-speaking countries, this seems to be especially true. Education and jobs are important to us. While on the other hand, we have real vacations, meaning five to six weeks paid, so we usually take two to three weeks at one time and really relax and get away. We also enjoy job security in Germany, and our laws make it difficult to fire somebody with no notice. In Germany, the government pays your health insurance when you are unemployed, but we also make sure not to take advantage of it. We are also an organized culture, so we expect things planned ahead, vacations or business meetings. Changes will take longer in Germany, while in the U.S. they adapt faster and are more spontaneous. In the business world, Germans are much more formal with each other, more goal-oriented. We take time to train new people. I remember my friend being surprised when she worked for an American company and the CEO sent out an inspirational email to all the employees. I think we are more self-motivated and keep business and personal lives separate. Other countries show up and uh they share not as many, but still a lot of things with German society, as is indicated by a slightly lighter green color. These countries include the Anglo-Saxon nations and countries in Western Europe. I believe that close proximity plays a role, and uh, in the case of countries like the US, that a lot of people living there have German ancestors. As a consequence, people in those countries and Germany have a lot of things in common. For example, all Western nations share that their citizens are highly individualistic when compared with people uh, in other parts of the world, meaning that they like to be in control of their own lives. Another thing that Anglo-Saxon countries like Canada or the UK show with Germany is that their people are equally driven towards high performance levels, meaning that they have a very strong work ethic. According to the GLOBE study, which provides another uh, set of data I used for my videos, such high levels of performance orientation can, can't be found in most countries outside of the so-called Western world. Uh, this doesn't mean that people who live in countries that do not belong to the Western world are not interested in uh, doing hard work. First impressions are very important in the German culture and may impact the outcome of your business relationship with your German counterpart. Communication is a vital factor to successful business relationships in any culture. Usually, generous personal distance is found between speakers and a conversation. An arm's length distance between two speakers is generally expected. Eye contact is expected and respected. It demonstrates attention and interest in a conversation. Avoiding eye contact may be interpreted as, in co as conveying the opposite message. German behavior in public is generally reserved and formal. Thus, waving at a person who is far away may attract negative attention. Germans are reserved and direct, almost to the point of bluntness. They take their time to warm towards you while speaking their mind immediately. Do not be offended. It is not meant to be a personal assault. Germans will also be quite comfortable saying no directly when necessary, or let you know when you, they cannot meet your expectations. In general conversation, Germans are very straightforward and often use only a few polite, chatty phrases. Typically. They get to the point rather quickly and expect to have results at the end of a meeting. It is highly recommended that you avoid exaggerations and high pressure talk. Just as Germans have certain expectations for communication, the German culture has certain standards for business relationships. Germans value order, privacy, and hard work. Germans respect perfectionism in all areas of business and private life, and they tend to focus on achieving the task at hand. German culture is regarded as a masculine culture. The task is a central focus in all business interactions and also determines the style of communication. Interpersonal relationships play a secondary role in business dealings. As business people tend to be more formal and conservative, business relationships are formal, orderly, and professional. There is a strong emphasis on rules, regulations, procedures, and processes.
Management style has a reputation for being relatively risk averse. Therefore, there is a preference for contracts and written agreements of all types. Germans enjoy quietness and privacy. They often close their doors, but will be happy to receive you if you knock on the door. A closed door does not necessarily mean that the person cannot be disturbed. Germany is a controlled time culture, and adherence to schedules is important and expected. In Germany, missing a deadline is a sign of poor management and inefficiency, and will shake people's confidence. Appointments are precisely planned, and it is expected that times which are set are adhered to. It is not uncommon for meetings in German in culture to run longer than in other cultures. What you have to know to make business with them? Tactfully recognize them as specialists of a subject. Accept their own process by modifying it the least possible. Use process like them. Do not create unstable environments with a risk for unforeseen events. Be a clear partner without changing orientation every month. Do not ask them too often to be accountable if you pilot them. Be on the same wavelength with them. The notion of success for German is to reach an objective according to the plan defined upstream. To realize something useful for the company or even still to improve the quality of the product through a new production process. All the attempts of seduction to create personal relationship will go against the expected effect. The Germans measure the efficiency of a partner by the productive aspect, which he will show or not by his capacity of seduction. Present an agenda for a meeting with different phases and objectives, which must be reached by the end of the meeting. Make short and precise sentences. Plan a technical documentation with a complete description of the product as well as a study of the competition if possible. Bring tests with quantified results. In the negotiation, German are suspicious in the negotiations. They rarely show their feelings and do not make a show. It's a question in most cases of adapting a frank and clear attitude to reach with them a common objective, a common agreement. A commercial which will speak too technically in a meeting will step down in the German eyes. Stay in your radius of actions. Remember that the Germans will always buy from a company more than from a man because it is the product with its technology which is important and not emotional relationship. And finally, be careful in taking commitment because they will not hesitate a second second to apply the contract clauses if necessary. This respect for commitment is also valid for them, which makes them reliable, effective and pleasant partners. The most widespread cliches about uh, Germany is that Germans are uh, punctual, very organized, speedy at work, and they do it very effectively. Um, of course, they drink a lot of beers and eat a lot of sausages. And yeah, I'm afraid it's true.